Hi, this is Mike Mazzalonga with BibleTalk.tv, and this is the series entitled 10 Steps to the New Spiritual You. Uh, we're going to cover uh, session number six today entitled Prayer. Well, we've stated that the goal of this series is that we become more like God, more godly, more Christ-like. This would be the character of the new spiritual you. Another question is, why this goal or why this purpose? And the answer is that it fulfills the purpose of our lives when we ask the question, why am I here? I read from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Paul says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. And so we're studying disciplines that help us in this spiritual transformation. We began with intimacy, which is consciously drawing near to God. Uh, simplicity, the uncluttering of our lives. The third discipline was silence, and then the fourth, solitude, uh, quietly listening to and for God. And then we talked about surrendering, letting go the responsibility for our transformation to God. In this session, we're going to look at the sixth step or discipline, which is prayer. In other words, understanding how to communicate with God when we do speak to Him. So the question is, what is prayer? Now, I want each person to complete in their own mind the following sentence. For me, prayer is fill in the blank. Well, let me tell you some of the things that prayer is not. First of all, prayer is not bargaining. In this type of exchange, a person attempts to change God's mind or offer him something in order to move him to take action in our favor. In other words, if you heal me, I will be good. Uh, if you uh, help my brother, uh, I will come to church more regularly. Secondly, prayer is not a get-rich scheme. Prayer does not automatically result in abundance of blessings. Sometimes God lets people die or remain in suffering or difficulty. Thirdly, prayer is not a wish list. We don't use God as a rubber stamp for getting all we want. Some people think that prayer is just the expression of our desires before God, and they feel if they've told Him everything that they want, well, they've, they've uh, offered a successful prayer. Number four, prayer is not a ritual or a charm. For example, if you say a certain number of prayers or say them in a certain way or uh, on a particular day or uh, a certain order, uh, then these prayers will be effective. This is the basis of magic and the occult, not of mature spirituality. In order to be effective in the development of a godly character, prayer needs to be the following. First of all, it needs to be a calling out to God. Prayer is a personal conversation with God that includes praise, thanksgiving, request, and repentance, to name a few elements. In prayer, we call out to God to know His will concerning the matters that we have put before Him. Number two, prayer needs to be a priority. I read from 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Paul says, First of all, then, I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men, for kings and all who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. Number three, prayer needs to become our remedy for worry. Jesus reveals the truth about the value of worry, which is zero. There is no value. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 7, he says, And when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, 
for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words. Godly, mature Christians replace worry with prayer in their lives. We seek God's solutions for our troubles through prayer instead of more worry. Number four, prayer needs to be constant. Paul says, Pray without ceasing in Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. Worry about nothing, pray about everything. Why? Uh, a person may ask. Because uh, trouble and stress are always there, so prayer must also be there each day. As human beings, we, we naturally are concerned about illness and trials, but concern is different than worry. Concern treats matters seriously relying on God to provide what is needed through prayer. Worry is choosing to fret and review the problem without giving it to God in prayer. The problem with worry is that it has no faith attached to it, so that it is a non-spiritual action that has no effect on the situation other than weakening the individual. Let's talk a bit about the perils and promises of prayer. So here then are a few tips for those ready to devote more time and energy to prayer. Remember, first, prayer is not a substitute for human responsibility. Pray and work and serve and seek and persevere. Yes, pray for success on the exam, but don't forget to study. Number two, pray to the true God. The true God is not your grandfather or your buddy or a faraway judge. He is the creator of everything and an all-powerful being for whom nothing is impossible. Trust in that when you pray. Number three, God answers prayers in his way, not yours. You see, God always hears the prayers of the saints, but his answers fulfill his will and his purpose. Paul's prayer in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 is a good example of that. He said, Because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Concerning this, I implored the Lord three times that it might leave me. And he has said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Note that God gave Paul what he needed, humility, and not what he wanted, healing. God wanted to be glorified through Paul's weakness rather than by his strength. Number four, no matter what, God is with you. Regardless of the answer or the time frame, because you are praying, God is with you. In the end, being with God is what brings peace and joy, not having your prayers answered. Well, that's all we have for this particular session on the topic of prayer. I have some questions for you to use as part of your discussion uh, section of your small group meeting, and uh, I'll see you next time. Question number one. Share with the group a prayer of yours that was answered or not answered and how that affected your faith. Question number two. In your opinion, what is the greatest misconception people have about prayer and why? Question number three, what is the greatest hindrance in your prayer life? How has this affected you? Question number four, how would you encourage someone who has given up on prayer? What would you say or do to revive their prayer life? Question number five, if you had the time or opportunity to offer only one prayer, share with the group what that prayer would be.